In the first announcement, the Federal Aviation Administration said it is optimistic that it could allow SpaceX to launch its mega rocket Starship by the end of October. But this time, it appears to be bad news for Starship's upcoming schedule. In an email sent to the concerned party, the FAA has confirmed that SpaceX has concluded a mishap investigation under FAA supervision. This comprehensive investigation delved into the launch, the mishap events, and the ensuing corrective measures. Now, in order to conduct a second launch, SpaceX must obtain a modified license addressing safety, environmental, and regulatory requirements. The FAA will review new environmental information, including changes to the launch pad and proposed vehicle modifications. A written re-evaluation of the programmatic environmental assessment is also mentioned, suggesting a modified assessment might be necessary. These reviews, in fact, can be very nebulous and take a long time. This also sounds a bit of this also sounds a bit like moving the goalpost by the FAA based on their earlier notice. I, along with many others, had hoped for another launch this year, but if the FAA wants another PEA, well then maybe next spring. Additionally, the email also mentions consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which is new and could affect the timeline. Consequently, the FAA has not granted authorization for SpaceX's proposed Flight 2. Keep in mind that this is also the first time such an email update has been sent out. Concerns about procrastination are completely possible. But is another delay really necessary at this point? Indeed, the maiden flight faced a series of complications. Starship was airborne for approximately four minutes before entering into an unexpected fatal tumble, necessitating a self-destruct command by ground controllers. Contributing factors to the misstep include multiple Raptor engine failures and booster issues. Furthermore, the absence of a blast suppression system at the launch pad resulted in significant damage and the spread of debris in the vicinity. In the wake of the botched flight, conservation groups mounted a lawsuit against the FAA for approving the launch. Wildlife officials note that upon surveying the scene after Starship's launch, they found chunks of concrete across the area and foot-deep craters on the tide flats. The report states that four acres of the nearby Texas State Park were burned. A group of blue land crabs and seven bobwhite quail eggs were incinerated by the launch. Overall, the explosion from the launch left a 385-acre debris field that flung concrete chunks as far as 2,680 feet from the launch pad and sparked a three-and-a-half-acre fire. There had been concerns for years about the proximity of SpaceX's rocket base to endanger Injured species, including a loggerhead sea turtle's nesting beach. A group of environmental groups sued the FAA following SpaceX's April launch, claiming the agency failed to perform an adequate environmental review. As for the harmed species, U.S. wildlife biologists did not find any deceased endangered animal life. However, biologists note that their investigation into this matter was greatly hindered by SpaceX. Wildlife officials were not allowed into the site area until a whole 48 hours after Starship's launch. This means that any possible animal life that was killed could have been previously removed from the site, washed away by the currents, or eaten by other animals before experts could properly document the aftermath. Much of the damage was caused by a purposeful decision from SpaceX that seemingly baffled experts in the documents. SpaceX did not use flame suppression technology like a flame diverter or flame trench, a standard in the industry that redirects energy away from the rocket ship. Without it, Starship blew a hole in the ground underneath it, subsequently destroying its launch pad. Considering all these reasons, SpaceX has changed and taken considerate measures to refine its gigantic rocket ship. Additionally, these modifications were rigorously confirmed through testing. Therefore, it is entirely reasonable for the FAA to accelerate the inspection process and grant approval for Starship to resume flights. Whether accidentally or intentionally, SpaceX posted a few photos of Starship yesterday and said Starship represents a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The company's CEO also retweeted that post and 
and declared Gateway to Mars. Indeed, if the Starship succeeds, it will change humanity as we know it. Starship is designed to carry passengers to the Moon and Mars as part of NASA's Artemis program, and eventually it will take 100 people on a long-duration interplanetary flights. On long-duration interplanetary flights. In fact, Starship will be so cost-effective It'll eventually be able to deliver about 100 tons of cargo to any planet in the solar system, such as Mars, for as little as 50 million US dollars. For comparison, the Space Shuttle, a reusable spacecraft system that NASA retired back in 2011, cost one and a half billion dollars to lift only about one quarter of what Starship will, and only into low Earth orbit. Additionally, Starship will be reusable, meaning rapid turnaround and relaunch cycles. Eventually, multiple versions of the spacecraft could put a million tons of cargo into space in a year. At that rate, launch costs would decrease roughly a hundred times from what they are now, and could even result in daily launches. That would mean launch costs could be driven down to about $23 a pound, making cost no longer a significant barrier to getting to space. In the past, science has been limited to what can be flown into space because of launch size and weight restrictions. The massive size and power of Starship will make humans visiting the Moon and Mars not only possible, but financially sustainable, even for those who aren't among the very rich. This could eventually lead to space tourism, with people paying money to visit hotels in space for the same cost as a plane ticket to Europe. Space experiments will also be so inexpensive that a high school science class could design, build, and send to space its own experiments. The ability of Starship to take heavy loads inexpensively into space will open up not just the ability to colonize other planets, it'll also create new opportunities for communications and Earth observation by taking tens of thousands of satellites into space for minimal cost. The number and types of satellites in orbit will no longer be limited by launch costs or the cargo bay of the rocket, which is often a big deterrent. For those back on Earth, it'll also mean access to services like hyper-localized weather prediction or crop health and yield affected by disease or droughts before it becomes a problem. And also, video communication will be available anywhere on Earth for almost no cost. On a macro level, this could also result in better earthquake prediction, air traffic control completely done from space, and navigation aids much better than today's GPS. But all of the possibilities that I've presented to you can only be in our dreams, unless Starship can be launched soon. In other news, a Russian Soyuz spacecraft carrying two cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut arrived at the International Space Station yesterday on the 15th of September, roughly three hours after lifting off. The MS-24 Soyuz rocket docked with the orbiting lab today at 2.53 p.m. EDT, while the two craft were flying 418 kilometers above eastern Kazakhstan. That was just three hours and nine minutes after Soyuz MS-24 lifted off from the Russian-run Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. A very quick trip to the ISS, but not quite a record-breaking one. The Soyuz MS-24 carried NASA's Laurel O'Hara and Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chubb, both of Russia's space agency Roscosmos. About two hours later, the hatches between the Soyuz and the ISS opened, and the three space flyers floated aboard the orbiting lab. O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chubb are joining seven other astronauts on board the orbiting lab. The two cosmonauts have embarked on a year-long ISS mission, while O'Hara will come home in half a year. O'Hara and Chubb are spaceflight rookies, but Kononenko is very experienced. The cosmonaut had already accrued 736 days in orbit across four different ISS missions before today's mission. During his long year stint, Kononenko broke the all-time record for most time in space at 878 days, held by fellow cosmonaut Gennady Padalka. MS-24's arrival also sets the wheels in motion for an ISS departure. On September 27th, a Soyuz-carrying cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Pedelin, as well as NASA's Frank Rubio, is on schedule to come back to Earth. Rubio will have spent 371 continuous days in space by that time, a record for an American astronaut. And that's it for today, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.